I wanted to, well, first of all, welcome back. I want to record a video that talks about transitions. So we're going to go ahead and um, get into some, what we're going to do is we're going to watch some videos here online about transitions. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to jump into making some of those transitions uh, with our editing softwares. Okay. So all a transition really is in video is taking us from uh, one video clip to the next. So in our uh, timelines, we will have, you know, two video clips next to each other. And those two video clips, the thing in between them, right, is called a transition. So what that means is that we, you know, uh, the most common transition that we have is we just take one video clip and put it next to the other video clip. That is called a jump transition or jump cut, okay? And that's literally what it, why it's called that is because you're jumping from this to that, okay? And so that's the easiest and most common uh, transition there is. Now, we're going to watch some other transitions and we're going to learn how to do them from these videos. So the, most of these transitions videos, they'll either talk about how to accomplish it or they'll show you. Um, so pay attention to these videos as we watch them. They're also posted in the assignment um, for you to watch there in case you need to rewatch them. Okay, so this first one we're going to watch is going to show you how to um, how to do it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and skip the ad here. This is going to show you six. Most of these we will do in the assignment. So just be aware of that. Okay, and... Uh, here we go. We'll go full screen for this guy. So here's what they're seeing on their camera screen and what they're actually doing. That's the final there. So what he's doing and then what you're seeing on the screen and then the final output here. Again, over here, what he's seeing on the screen of his camera. Okay, so this final montage right here, and this is something that you're going to be making as well, something similar to this. Okay, so that was our first one, right? And here they say, remember that transitions enhance a the story, they don't make it. And that's very true. Transitions are there to help tell the story, All right? If we go back to kind of my my classic comparison of, of cooking and video editing and video creation, right? They're very similar um, where you have certain rules and regulations in cooking, and you have to follow those. You can break them a little bit here and there, but you have to know them first, right, in order to break it. It's the same thing with video editing. You have to, you know, and in, in this case, transitions are compared to the spices in cooking, right? So if you wanted to make a, you know, pumpkin spice cookie, you wouldn't take a whole bottle of pumpkin spice and dump it on a pan and throw it in the oven and call them pumpkin spice cookies. That would that would be disgusting, right? And um, it's the same thing here with video editing. Your transitions are those things that just kind of bring it to the next level, that enhance the story um, rather than making the story and telling the story, okay? 
So that's our first one. Okay. Um, next, we're going to watch this one. Okay. And specifically watch for the whip pan, whip tilt that he talks about in here. Um, we saw it in that first one, but I want want you to watch this one because it's a little bit different um, and I think a little bit better. Um, well, that's not necessarily true, but this one shows a little bit more information is all I'm trying to say there. Yo, Darius for here. I've been getting a lot of questions. A lot of you out there have been saying, yo, D4, I like these transitions. You're doing your videos. How are you doing these transitions in your videos? Calm down. I'm going to show you what's real. We're gonna keep this one short and sweet. The first one is just a simple cover. Oh, you just cover the camera in one shot and then uncover it with something. In the first video, they called that the in and out, okay? Where you, and then different, right? That'd been cool if I would've made my own transition there. <laughs> Playing something a little bit better there. Something like this. Right? So it's just a transition between the two. Something in the next. The next transition is the whip pan. Anybody who's watched my channel over the last three months, you probably guessed that that's the one that I use the most. You just whip the camera in one direction at the end of one shot, and then in the following shot, you whip the camera into the shot. And then in the edit, you just hide the cut in the motion blur. You can also whip pan to yourself using the exact same technique. See? Oh yeah, and you can also whip tilt. The next one is the distraction. It's basically just like a whip pen, only you're following body parts. And then we got this spin. This one is a lot of fun. Couple tips. First, you spin in the same direction in both shots. But what really helps you sell it is shaking the camera slightly in each shot. If you cut right into the shake, the added motion blur helps you hide the cut. This is one of those you're gonna have to practice a little bit. Next, we got the shake. It's essentially the same technique. You're shaking the camera and then you're hiding the cut in the motion blur. You can also use this technique to make things appear and disappear. Just like magic, the last one is the block. The idea is pretty simple. You move the camera behind something in one shot, and then unblock it in the next shot, hide the cut in the block somewhere, and you're good to go. The key is to plan out all of these transitions in advance. Remember, you can take any one of these transitions and combine them with other transitions to, to make like different effects. Just be creative. I call this one the super spin. <laughs> Would make a All right. So there you go. There's that one. Okay. And we're going to watch two more. This one covers what I call the snap transition. He calls it in here the match cut. Um, and so just be aware of that. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. And we'll talk about uh, kind of an advanced version of the snap or the match cut here um, in just a second and it really sells the transition. Okay, the next one is the, and just like that, you do a match cut. So basically you're just cutting on the sound or the action. So if I was to do something like a, and just like that, you are now in a new scene. So the whole concept behind this is hitting something, either snapping or hitting, and then a transition on that match cut. All right, so I got a few more transitions, but now I'm gonna shoot. Okay, so there's that one, all right. Um, that one's pretty straightforward, easy to do. All of these are really easy to do. And the reason why a lot of these titles say in camera transitions is because you're using the camera, right, to create the transitions. And then in the editing bay, you're just putting those transitions together that you've created. And so what you're doing is you're combining a jump cut, but with things, actions that you've made inside of your video um, while recording. So therefore, you're getting the transition in camera. All right. This last one is mo focused mostly on post-production here. So let's skip this ad. Um, and he shows you how to do it. And here at the beginning, he shows you what it looks like, uh, what the final, final piece will look like. Okay. You can do all of these things inside of Premiere Rush uh, as well as Premiere Pro. This 
uh, YouTube channel shows you how to do it inside of Premiere Pro, which we will hopefully eventually be learning as well in this class, um, just so that you are aware of that. All right, here we go. Oh, full screen bad this boy. Okay, so right there what you saw is a sync cut or cutting to the beat is also something that it's called or a match cut. Okay, and it's where you take the the music. Right? So every boom 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 Boom, right, and then he cuts on it. He's going to show you. My name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, or basically for any video editor, I'm going to show you how to create the sync cut edits. It's one of the most basic popular types of editing. So let's say you have a music track or some type of, of sounds on your timeline, and you want to sync your clip to this. Now, this could work really cool with slow motion type of clips or clips where there's a smooth panning or some type of movement but basically what you want to do is look at your music track and listen to it a couple times and figure out what it says to you so each music track has a different mood or feel some things sound like slow motion some things sound like fast forward uh, some things sound like fading out or fading in this is something you kind of have to develop a vision for. It can't really be taught. It's all about your creative vision. But in this case, I want to do a jump each time it does that little violin or like string hit. So what I can do is look at the actual waveform and listen to it a couple times and use my arrow keys to find that exact point and then press C to get my razor tool. No matter what program you're in, you can pretty much cut. You can also find the razor tool and all your other tools on the left side here, but C is a shortcut. And what I can do is just cut on this clip and then move over to a section where a decent amount of camera movement has happened and there will be a significant change that's visible. And then make another cut and then I'm just going to press V to grab my move tool, highlight that middle portion and just delete it. And now when I drag this clip back over, what I'll get is a cut or a jump to a little bit more forward in the clip and that abrupt jump in the camera motion will sync to the music. So there's unlimited amount of ways that you can do this. You can cut between different clips like I'm doing here and sync to each different peak or you can cut from one actual clip to a completely different clip and a bunch of different clips in a row to create cool cinematic sequences. Additionally, you can do things like add text, like file, new, title, and add text or objects or other effects that come in right when the beat drops or certain things hit in the music. And you can add things like transitions to fade out or fade in to create another type of cinematic cut because when it hits that next bump in the beat, it'll flash back on at a different point. So you can see that most of this is done by hand. It's just your hand touch, listening to the specific piece of music you have over and over and kind of visualizing in your head the pacing of it and the beats per minute and whether it sounds slow or fast to you. But you could use these basic waveforms and cut and arrange things and place them on the beat to create a nice syncopated cut or cinematic sequence. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, definitely leave a like on it and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned for all my future videos so you don't miss any of the Okay, so there's there's some stuff from Justin Odicio.